Hello everyone, this is Abhishek Das. I'm a structural engineer at ACOM and uh, today I'll be discussing about the proof checking of a composite steel eye girder bridge which is located in the UK. Um, I'll be talking about the mainly the analysis and design aspects of the bridge. Uh, we've used a software Midas Civil for most of the design. Uh, and uh, in the next 30 to 45 minutes I'll take you through the basic workflow what we followed and how uh, the software helped us in doing that okay so in the today's presentation we'll be doing the following contents uh, I'll be talking about the general description of the bridge um, the geometry and all and then we'll be moving on to the design ex actions that were considered uh, analysis and construction aspects and finally the capacity checks and design so the site location is basically the uh, M6 to M1 uh, link um, uh, this is the present scenario on the left hand side we have the M6 motorway on the left and uh, then on the right we have the A14 and from north to south we can see uh, the M1 road, M1 motorway. Now there are some uh, de new developments in, the, in this particular area. We are going to have a lot of new structures you can see on the right hand side there are about 10 new structures coming up. Um, which is which are basically uh, because of the congestion of traffic in the existing network so uh, our main focus will be bridge number three which is which you can see here uh, the pier locations are marked this is a six span bridge you can see the skewed piers uh, near where the three is written this is going to be the span arrangement in more detail uh, the, uh, there are total of six spans uh, and uh, and then most of the uh, piers are skewed uh, skewedly placed your piers 3, 4, 5 in the east abutment which are having a very high skew of uh, uh, in the range of 70 to 60 degrees so that uh, they can align with the proposed M6 A14 link which is going under under the bridge and that's the elevation uh, this is the carriageway information uh, you have six composite steel eye girders uh, with the bracing system in between overall width of the deck is 16.6 .6 meters uh, the carriageway is 7.3 meter wide which according to Eurocode will be designed with two notional lanes um, and then you have uh, s the reinforced concrete deck slab which is a 250 millimeter thick okay. the overall depth of the girders is 1.7 meters and you have two verge, uh, verges on uh, either side uh, 2 meters each okay. uh, the bearing articulation of the bridge is as shown here uh, pot bearings have been used okay. and uh, most all the bearings are uh, um, are having uh, a free type of notation which is free in translation uh, in the uh, lateral and the longitudinal direction uh, except for the central bearing for each pier as you can see here the central bearing for each pier has been guided with respect to the bearings on central bearing on pier number two pier number two has fixed bearings uh, fixed in x y and z uh, translation the columns uh, are free to sway such that they can take the temperature movements then the abutments and piers uh, are reinforced concrete uh, piers are basically circular in shape uh, which are with a torch shape uh, tapered uh, I mean on the top they have a larger dim dimension and then tapered and then finally having a dimension of uh, 1.4 meter dia 
uh, it's supported on a pile cap uh, with pile uh, with piles uh, which are board piles the board piles have been used here because of the depth or the because of the length maximum length of the piles was going around uh, 21 meters and uh, normally we would use uh, CFA piles up to a depth of uh, 12 meters because construction is very fast with CFA piles uh, typical diameter of the piles uh, used is 750 millimeters abutments are 1.2 meters thick now there were some cost comparisons done uh, just to give an idea about uh, what different other bridge alternatives had been uh, selected. Uh, in basically two bridge types were uh, been being looked upon. Uh, one is the ladder beam uh, deck uh, which has two very deep uh, main girders uh, on the edges and then in between they are supported by cross girders. Um, so the 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 cost was uh, for a two span system for either ladder deck or multi gutter deck was too high, so it was rejected. And uh, proposed structure uh, consists of uh, multi gutters, uh, and this was uh, seen to have a much economical uh, cost uh, from the cost point of view, and therefore this particular option was selected. Uh, the ladder deck option was rejected also because of uh, the aesthetics point of view. It didn't match with the other set of structures that were being that were coming up in uh, in that particular location. This is information about the material grades used: uh, C40 uh, cylindrical strength uh, for the deck uh, piers, and for the abutments and piles, uh, 32 MPa strength of concrete was used. Structural steel work is uh, S355 grade steel. Uh, weathering steel was used. Uh, the benefit of weathering steel from the environment pros uh, point of view is, uh, is very good because uh, it doesn't require any paints, artificial paints, uh, which is good for the sustainability and environment. Also, um, it can be recycled easily and uh, reused. A permanent formwork was used on the bridge, uh, which is in the form of precast concrete planks. Um, this serves in also providing some additional thickness to the reinforced concrete, existing reinforced concrete slab, thus increasing the structural strength of the composite steel girders. Okay, now I'll be talking about uh, uh, design actions that were considered in. In the in the checking of this bridge or the design of this bridge, starting with the permanent actions, you have uh, self weight uh, basically in the form of concrete and steel. Uh, concrete and steel densities are shown here. Uh, surfacing assumed uh, was 120 millimeters, uh, which is you can say the wearing course, uh, total wearing course. Uh, th there are a few pointers here about how the loads were applied in the numerical analysis software okay so uh, we we use the software midas civil for checking of this bridge uh, and uh, we applied the different loads uh, mostly in the form of uh, line loads as our model that we prepared uh, for analysis was a grillage model and uh, surfacing was applied as a load 2.9 km kilonewtons per meter square uh, distributed uniformly on on the carriageway then uh, permanent formwork and edge cantilever formwork were similarly applied just to give you an idea about how these loads were applied in the software let me take you to the model itself so i have uh, i have one of the uh, models that we used uh, in, uh, in in the analysis of this bridge so so basically loads uh, because of the work user interface and the ease of application of loads um, we could apply loads uh, at different locations and different patches 
so uh, as you can see here we have the surfacing loads applied and uh, and permanent formwork distributed uh, uniformly uh, on different girders okay okay then we move on to wind so as per euro code uh, uh, one uh, wind velocities were taken basic wind velocities so the calculation procedure is uh, very much similar to um, uh, what we do in all the codes uh, we have the pressure wind pressure at certain location uh, multiplied with the uh, with the coefficients so uh, we consider two cases wind without live load when there is a when there is no vehicle on it uh, then the depth of the section is considered for wind calculation and uh, the other case is if we have live load we consider the height of the live load also in picture so these are the loads that were applied in our in our model uh, which were applied in the transverse direction throughout the um, throughout the length of the bridge then we move on to thermal actions so as per euro code uh, we have uh, two types of thermal actions that we can define on the structure uh, we have a uniform temperature action which depends which is maximum minimum temperature uh, based on the shaded temp temperature we have a graph uh, our bridge type is a composite uh, steel composite deck so basically we have a type 3 uh, type 2 type of, uh, of of a bridge deck and uh, then uh, we have temperature difference loading uh, which is based on the surfacing and the reinforced concrete uh, thickness so there can be a non-linear uh, difference in the temperature on the top surface and as we go along the height uh, of the section so we ha uh, we applied this uh, two types of loads in Midas civil in our analysis then move on to traffic loads uh, basically we have we consider three types of or rather four types of traffic loads in this particular in this particular checking uh, first is a normal traffic load which is load model 1 as per euro code 1 which consists of a tandem load and a udl it's applied on all the lanes so be the number of notional lanes is determined by the carriageway and the um, and also the shoulder so basically if I have a carriage of 7.3 meters and 3 meters of shoulder then we can have uh, three notional lanes in that area and the remaining part whatever remains is is defined as a remaining area so the table here shows what kind of loads are applied as per euro code and uh, adjustment factors uh, which is similar to lane factors that uh, we use in other standards then there is a general order traffic load which is consists of multiple axles uh, it's a special vehicle uh, SB196 uh, this is as per the UK national annex of Eurocode uh, has been considered in the checking of this bridge uh, the characteristic of this vehicle is that it can straddle transversely so it can occupy more than one lane at a time uh, this particular vehicle is also multiplied with a dynamic uh, amplification factor uh, which is for vehicles up uh, for speeds greater than 70 kilometers per hour now in our live load analysis uh, we combine the live load effects of both load model 3 and load model 1 so the way they are going to be placed is again the rules are defined in UK national annex so as I mentioned uh, this is a vehicle which can straddle in two lanes so these are some rules for combination uh, of load model 3 and load model 1 then footway actions uh, so there, there are two verge uh, on either side either edges of the bridge uh, we apply it with um, a footway loading of uh, typically 5 kN per meter square now this footway load is also applied in conjunction with load model 1 so when we combine it we basically reduce the value uh, use 60% of the footway loading and combine it with load model 1 then there is a special clause which was uh, pro which was required to be uh, followed in the design uh, basis report uh, which is the consideration of the abnormal vehicle uh, category C vehicle uh, as per the highway uh, manual of the UK 
now this this is the uh, vehicle that was considered is similar to the special vehicle uh, the uh, the truck loading that we considered in the previous slide okay then apart from these vertical loads horizontal loads were considered um, horizontal loads in euro code are uh, braking and acceleration and centrifugal forces braking acceleration forces are applied as a component of load model 1 itself uh, applied in the horizontal direction and since this uh, this is a curved bridge so uh, centrifugal forces play a, uh, an important role so for heavier vehicles uh, this is the uh, formulation that is used normally uh, braking and acceleration loads applied at the uh, at wherever you have the uh, the fixed bearings which can attract the most uh, of the horizontal forces then f uh, being a steel bridge uh, fatigue analysis uh, needs to be done uh, for 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 such type of bridges so fatigue load model which is a special vehicle in uh, in the euro code uh, was considered uh, fatigue load model 3 and this load is applied on only one lane on the bridge okay now we move on to how uh, the structure was analyzed how the forces were applied and analyzed so first let us look at uh, the modeling part um, the deck was modeled basically with a grillage of longitudinal and transverse elements so uh, being the skew angle because the skew angle is greater than 20 degrees in in the piers and also at the east eastern abutment so an orthogonal type of grillage was used you can see on the screen uh, the transverse elements are always uh, perpendicular to the longitudinal elements at all location okay so here the tra longitudinal en elements mainly consist of the main girders uh, which are having composite section properties and then you have the uh, transverse elements which are uh, representing the transverse deck behavior Okay, the the properties that we use for the transverse uh, for the main girders is uh, we use the effective uh, slab from uh, center to center distance of the main girders. Okay, we also check the effective width uh, of the section uh, for the stress analysis. Uh, there dif there's the different uh, for different types of span we have different effective width formulation, um, and uh, that is used to reduce the width of the slab uh, to be considered for stress calculation only then transverse deck uh, for calculation of transverse deck properties uh, we, re we reduce the torsional stiffness of the transverse deck so that we can attract more moments on the main girders um, and uh, uh, and similarly we can also reduce the torsional stiffness of main girders when we are designing the transverse elements so that we get we can have a more um, uh, we can we can have a safer design for the transverse direction uh, rebars so a uh, width of uh, the transverse sections is equal to the center center spacing of the transverse elements and depth is equal to thickness of the slab then steel bracings were used uh, which were line elements with uh, moment uh, released at both ends uh, steel diaphragms are used on the pier locations which are also designed as composite properties then we have concrete piers and piles and abutments and pile caps uh, which are modeled as plate elements okay so let's have a look at the model again okay so in midas uh, because of a more of a cad based interface uh, we could model the both the substructure and superstructure together the advantage of doing that is that uh, we can include the same concurrent forces um, due to live loads and other um, other variable loads uh, which are coming on the superstructure we can include those type of those loads concurrently on the foundation as well so it it, it gives us some lesser conservative or more accurate uh, uh, analysis of the substructure plus it reduces time in extraction of results because we have everything in the same model okay so you see here we have uh, uh, the grillage model over here with uh, with the bracings modeled as x type of bracings and k type of bracings um, just to show you how the bracings are connected to the uh, to the grillage deck We've used rigid link, 
with master node as the deck node and which is connected rigidly to all these uh, um, the bracing elements and if I take a section out uh, say near the pier okay so we have the uh, the pier here uh, and just to have a look uh, in in a fleshed view okay there is a peer diaphragm also which is modeled with composite section properties then we have a torch copier okay. and then the piles are also applied the piles are also provided with uh, soil springs uh, both in the horizontal and vertical directions and then we have the bearings modeled as elastic links uh, in the software um, elastic link allow uh, elastic is a very good feature in Midas Civil that allows us to put in uh, different stiffnesses of the bearing and also put in guided bearings or uh, fixed bearings and we could also rotate the angles of the elastic link so that we get guided bearings in a particular direction so all those things were reflected in uh, in the analysis here These are some snapshots taken from the model. Okay, uh, for the analysis of concrete, uh, because it's a composite bridge, so uh, the construction of the um, or the pouring of the concrete has been done at different time intervals. So the creep and shrinkage and compressive strength behavior of the concrete has also been defined in the uh, in our analysis as per Eurocode two. So basically the creep coefficient versus time, shrinkage strain versus time and strength gain versus time was considered in the analysis. Now how the composite properties were assigned, uh, as per Euro code we need to keep 15% of the span on either side of the intermediate supports uh, cracked. So most of the man main girders were assigned with uh, composite properties um, except for the locations 15% of span on either side of intermediate supports where the slab was not considered only reinforcement and steel was considered okay. uh, and also the main gutters are considered composite at different stages because the pouring of the deck does not happen in one go only uh, we pour the deck in different stages so based on the sequence of the pouring the beams become composite one by one so these lines you see represent the locations where you have the uncracked and the cracked sections. Okay, so if I go back to the to the model, okay, uh, we have defined reinforcement uh, to our composite steel section. Let me show you uh, just the section properties that we. Uh, assumed in the analysis okay. so this is how we defined uh, our uh, composite section uh, the slab width was uh, 2.86 meters okay, and these are few specification of the girders and then we defined some reinforcement information Okay, so these small dots here you can see are the rebars that were defined um, so that we could consider these reinforcement in the cracked location near the supports. Okay, so substructure and foundation modeled as the line elements for piers and piles and plate elements for the apartments and pile caps. Uh, points spring supports in Midas Civil were used to define the vertical and horizontal stiffness of the soil to consider soil structure interaction. Now we'll talk about the construction sequence of this bridge. Okay, the main part of the construction sequence was to decide the pouring sequence, how the deck was to be poured because the bridge is so skewed, especially in the eastern side. Uh, it was critical to, uh, to have a very good pouring sequence so that we don't have any uplift 
uh, in any of the bearings or we don't have excessive deformations in the steel girders so let us look at uh, how the pouring was done in this particular uh, bridge okay so the basic sta stage of construction was all steel girders were first launched one uh, so the launching and was also done in a sequence from one end to from east to the west end um, bracings uh, permanent bracings were uh, automatically uh, I mean launched as the steel girders were launched and we had to use some temporary bracings to control the deformation uh, deck is also poured in then poured in sequence before every deck pour the wet concrete load was applied in the analysis uh, and after six days the concrete was made composite this was done in order to simulate the correct uh, load uh, load ta load taking capability of the concrete uh, and the correct age of concrete when the form work when the concrete was able to take um, the loads and the creep and shrinkage behavior was uh, considered as per that loading so here I have a short video just showing how the uh, construction sequence was done. So just a little bit, this video is going gone a little bit fast. So I just pause it and then show you. So you have the steel girders first launched on uh, one of the spans, and then slowly it goes on. Okay, and then you have the deck being poured in sequ in different stages. So starting from the east end, you have this kind of zigzag uh, deck pouring sequence. So the support regions are left empty, okay, and they are later on filled. So that's how the um, construction sequence goes. Uh, to show you in the software, uh, I have another uh, model opened up here which just focuses on the construction of the bridge. So give, to give you an idea, we have uh, say the first stage, which is you have the steel girders in. Then you have some temporary bracings in place. Then another span comes into picture and then temporary bracings. So it goes on. Uh, the way the construction stage is are defined in Midas is uh, uh, actually helped us to reduce a lot of time involved in the analysis uh, and we could edit the construction stages uh, later on very easily because we had some um, we, we had to continuously change the construction sequence in order to come up with more optimized way of uh, pouring the deck so uh, just to show you how we actually did it in the software um, we have uh, we different construction stages we can model here um, in a very simple fashion we just uh, um, define the elements or the structural components that we want to activate in a particular stage or we want to remove in a particular stage deactivate similarly boundaries any particular supports we want to include uh, we can include in the activated part and the loads as well whatever loads like wet concrete loads and uh, and form work loads so all those can be considered very easily in the construction stages and later on it can be edited as well so using this tool of construction this wizard of construction stage analysis um, we could uh, model the steel work as well as the uh, the concrete all right so i'll just remove the fleshed view to make it run a little bit faster Okay, so CS1, we had the deck wet concrete poured. And CS3, we the deck becomes composite. So when when it becomes composite, we activate the grillage elements as well. So transversely, the deck starts participating, and so on. We have uh, further um, deck coming up. Okay. ok 
okay and then in the last stage we have the uh, SIDL applied in the form of surfacing Uh, let's let's have a look at the deformation as well because one of the challenges in this bridge was the excessive uh, deformation in the steel work um, when the steel was being launched. So um, we had to provide temporary bracings accordingly to control uh, the deformation. So construction stage model uh, helps us to also uh, obtain the uh, pre camber of the bridge and that needs to be provided uh, in the drawings for different load cases like self weight and uh, uh, and superimposed dead load and creep and shrinkage so in different stages we were able to find out what the deformations were and, and where to where the temporary bracings need to be placed for example in this especially in this skewed region we have very high deformation we, we have very high deformation in the uh, in the edge girders uh, which uh, for which we need to needed to provide the bracings okay so gradually we can see um, the the deformations in the bridge and similarly we can also uh, when we're doing the design of the composite section we can also incorporate the uh, the stresses the logged in stresses from the steel only stage and then um, combine it with the stage when we have uh, the concrete in place that is composite action so we can look at beam diagrams also um, okay so this is the moment distribution it was okay so and let's move on to the next aspect where we will be dis talking about the design aspect of the bridge how the bridge was uh, designed and checked so three uh, I'm talking about three major parts of the design uh, first is the design of the main girders composite steel girders and then we have the design of the substructure piers and piles and abutments pile caps and then design of transverse reinforcement in the deck transverse design of the deck Okay, so first the composite steel design Eurocode 4 was followed for the design of composite steel girders. Um, major aspects of the design include the, the amount of longitudinal bars, amount of longitudinal bars uh, to be used and uh, uh, depth of the girder, flange thickness, um, the web thickness and uh, also shear connectors uh, for the longitudinal shear checks and transverse stiffeners to be used on the web to resist the vertical shear, uh, shear buckling due to the vertical shear um, and then SLS checks include uh, stress limitation for reinforcement steel and concrete okay. so uh, let us go back to the analysis uh, model where I'll show you how what are all these aspects how they were covered in the design Okay, so <coughs> this is the full model. First of all, uh, we generated some load combinations based on Eurocode as per UK NX. So uh, we had different uh, combinations uh, just to go through them quickly. 
uh, we are dead loads coming out from the construction stages uh, all the dead load locked in forces and stresses coming from the construction stages uh, which includes our um, wet concrete steel weight uh, permanent formwork and uh, sidl which includes uh, uh, the barriers and uh, um, and and the uh, surfacing and then this will combined with uh, live loads different live load combinations okay you can see here just uh, I'll open up the description okay abnormal live load loading plus dead loads okay then they were combined with uh, with other variable actions like like wind okay then sls combinations okay so different combinations uh, were done and then after that um after that we looked at the uh, at the forces as well just to check uh, uh, whether uh, um, whether everything is in the um, is, in is according to uh, according to the uh, initial initial calculations that we had done by hand. So uh, in the beam diagrams, uh, we can look out look at both the forces in in the steel work only section and also in the section when the steel comp uh, in the concrete becomes composite so uh, mainly we are interested in the uh, for the dead loads uh, we we have the uh, locked in forces from the construction stages so we can look at those uh, as we just saw um, in the previous slide um, we can look at uh, we can extract forces and stresses from uh, when the steel was being when the bridge was being constructed and when the live load runs we can look at the worst case live load positions and extract the envelope out so uh, there's a very good facility in the software for doing that um, which we used here we, we were able to extract the position of the worst case uh, live load Okay, so this is the uh, the worst case combination for a particular uh, uh, position here, and somewhere in the mid span of span one. This is for the load case where you have uh, where you have both load model three and load model one. Okay, so, so you can see how the vehicle has been positioned in alternate spans to obtain maximum sagging moment and the influence line can also be seen in the background okay. so that's how we have, uh, this this is how we can we could check the um, the live load calculations um, with our own calculation in house calculations and also um, you could extract the maximum envelope of uh, these um, uh, uh, for the live load uh, for particular girders for example if I activate one of the girders here so this is how we could extract envelopes and then quickly uh, transfer it to excel sheets uh, where we could apply some more calculations on it so everything was available in the um, in the table format Okay, so like this, and uh, we this also helped us to get the coexisting forces too. So not only the maximum or minimum uh, 
forces but also coexisting moments with maximum axial force for instance so that's the force part of it uh, and then for the design part uh, we used the inbuilt uh, design wizard and this really helped us to uh, quicken the process of the design because we could just uh, uh, we could just use the parameters uh, here and uh, th they were similar to what parameters we were design checking for so we had ULS checks for bending resistance vertical shear stress limitation check for SLS uh, longitudinal shear checks okay then um, design material uh, then shear connectors so typically we had two, two numbers of shear connectors applied on the on all the girders except for places of high shear where we like the pier diaphragms where we went for three number of shear connectors tensile strength uh, was as per the shear stud specifications and uh, again height and center to center distance of the shear connectors could be entered so everything was entered in an in a table format and also directly applied to um, to the model okay and then we had uh, transverse stiffener so spacing of the transverse stiffener was also different in different parts of the section and that was also checked uh, and modified in some cases based on the vertical shear checks that we obtained so for vertical shear web buckling transverse stiffener are provided to re to to resist that buckling so we had transverse stiffener uh, typically 250 millimeter by 225 millimeter uh, thick uh, stiffeners were provided at different intervals uh, spacings and then uh, uh, we had fatigue checks so for fatigue analysis uh, typically for fatigue check only one uh, load case that is a fatigue load model is considered in the combination and for the fatigue resistance check uh, we just as per the euro code 4 we apply damage equivalence factors which stand for the number of cycles of damage uh, for the traffic loads applied on the bridge and with all these parameters uh, Midas uh, Civil came up with uh, very nice tabulated tables um, like bending resistance tables which informed about us about the uh, the classification of the section the steel sections uh, top flange bottom flange classification uh, as in um, the compact non compact semi compact or uh, class 1 2 3 4 and then the moment cap moments uh, that are being applied um, because it's a prop construction uh, we have moments applied uh, and to be considered in the design uh, from both the steel structure as well as the composite structure so we have MAD which is as, uh, which is the same notification used in Eurocode for uh, the forces or moments in steel only and MCED which is moments in concrete only I mean after becoming uh, composite what is the additional moment uh, that is coming into picture and then based on the compact or non-compact section we calculate plastic moment resistance and elastic moment resistance and finally the um, if based on the compact section we find out what is the actual moment of resistance okay so all those calculations it did uh, so which made it easier to extract the results and check quickly uh, which part of the section was failing and then modify uh, or uh, comment on those particular parts then similarly vertical shear resistance checks were performed okay uh, which takes into consideration uh, the combined axial moment and shear check okay so uh, with all these uh, apart from all these sheets we uh, we could also extract uh, um, a detailed calculation sheet which helped us to check uh, whether the um, I mean wh what are the steps of calculation just to be sure um, and also we can include it in reports so this type of uh, uh, sheet was generated by Midas which is uh, which provided full information on uh, on the bending resistance and shear capacities of the section okay. so we could easily correlate with what cl clause of the euro code uh, was being followed in the software okay. and whatever was remaining we we could just do simple hand calculations uh, to prove them for example for the longitudinal uh, rebars uh, we 
um, for the longitudinal reverse we do the design um, uh, I mean we check the moment capacities but we also check the uh, whether the longitudinal reinforcement and the transverse reinforcement are sufficient to carry out the shear which occurs at the interface of steel and concrete and uh, near the shear studs so that is another check where that we can do and plus special checks at the splice zones um, at the bearing location um, special checks for the bracings all those things um, we did using excel sheets um, a very good uh, guidance uh, for steel bridges that uh, can uh, that, that we can follow is uh, the steel construction institute manual um, and uh, and also the eurocode 4 design guide by uh, thomas telford Okay, so after the composite steel design, we could come up with uh, a drawing table like this, which consists of uh, uh, information about the plates uh, being used in the girders, and uh, and also the stiffener spacing, shear connectors used, um, and uh, top flange and bottom flange uh, welds. The pre-camber information was calculated from the construction stage analysis. So this table below with num different numbers plus and minus are the pre camber information for uh, steel uh, for sulfate uh, of steel sulfate of concrete sidl etc pier and pile design because we had everything in the same model uh, we could extract the same combination for both uh, our uh, our uh, superstructure as well as substructure design so just to give an example how uh, we did it uh, in in the software uh, again for eurocode uh, 2 we have got uh, we use the in inbuilt feature for column checking um, we could extract the mn interaction curves and also uh, do a combined axial bending capacity check for columns so I'll just select few columns here can we look at the uh, checks so we we, we could provide a column uh, reinforcement for checking so we provided different reinforcement and stirrups and we obtained uh, some information so this is one of the preliminary models um, so you can see um, the actual resistance check and this shows uh, some red zones which means some reinforcement needs to be increased uh, in the in the concrete column okay so it does the full uh, checking uh, stress check and also ULS check for the columns and uh, again as just like Eurocode 4 we we were also able to cross verify by uh, extracting a detailed calculation report like this which we can correlate with the code just to see if the everything is going fine within the calculations or not okay uh, and then similarly uh, the next stage was uh, designing the transverse reinforcement in the deck so transverse reinforcement because we had modeled it as a grillage uh, of transverse and longitudinal elements we could directly mo design the transverse beam itself to calculate how much reinforcement was needed in the transverse direction for the deck but of course uh, we uh, also checked it using a plate analysis uh, later on to just to be sure the stresses are coming in control and whatever we have assumed in the grillage model is uh, is a correct assumption so normally it will be a more conservative design through grillage model so again coming back to the grillage model here if i just take one of the uh, transverse elements that is a starting span only okay so again uh, we provided some reinforcement just like uh, the column design and uh, then selected few transverse elements let's say and just check them okay that's the different sections cut out on the transverse elements transverse members and uh, we've got the beam moment capacity shear capacity and similarly we can also obtain the serviceability information crack fit check crack control and deflection control
stress control checks so all these uh, reports uh, we could uh, summarize in a table format from Midas and include it in our report um, uh, and of course uh, all these uh, calculations we uh, we checked through the detailed report of Midas uh, through different uh, clauses of uh, Eurocode uh, just to cross verify. Okay, so these are different aspects that were used in the design. Okay, so with this, I come to the end of the session. Um, uh, I hope uh, was able to cover most of the important aspects of uh, the design and analysis uh, of the composite steel bridge. Uh, that we did. There were also a lot of other aspects, but time permitting, I just uh, was able to include the major ones. So, um, thank you for your attention and uh, um, have a great day.